So the yeah. yips, I can get rid of the yips with somebody in a session. No problem. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm on a Skype call right now with Dr. Alan Nisipany from University of Idaho. And Dr. Allen is a specialist in athletic movement. So uh, tell us a little bit about what you do educationally and also like in uh, research. So basically I, I run a doctor of athletic training program. And so we look at athletic injuries, uh, movement patterns and all of those kind of things. Uh, but in my, in my practice, I treat issues that hover between kind of mental and physical. So the energetic realm. Uh, and so basically, what ha yeah, so what's interesting about that is that there's a connection between your mind and your body, right? And so if your mind's telling you one thing and your body wants to do another, uh, it's really a fist fight to see who wins. And so basically what I try to do is make sure that the body, mind, and spirit are all on the same page. That way you're working with yourself, not against yourself. Yeah, and golf, we constantly, we always hear about one of the only sports you hear about it with. Because in, in, in football, they're like, hey, do this, and you go and you do that. In golf, though, we have this idea of feel and real. So somebody right. might, be, might be telling you, like, hey, I want you, like uh, Monty on my channel, is like, I want you to cast it as hard as you can, you know, he'll yeah. tell some students. And uh, in them casting it as hard as they can, they'll actually hold lag more. A lot of guys will have certain golf problems that they'll live with for uh, 40 years. And they'll be yeah. like, oh, yeah, that's just me. So w what's the disconnect in golf? Yeah, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of ways of answering that question. But the first way is that, you know, I, I have a rule that I didn't come up with, but it's true. Um, I wish I did. Is that if you think you know what's wrong and it's not, and you don't feel better by knowing it, that wasn't it. And so you should at least feel better instantly when you know what was wrong. So let, give me a free example for that one. Yeah, so if you think that your problem is standing up, and then you don't feel better by knowing that, then that's not actually your problem. Your standing up is a reaction to something that's happening earlier in the process. And you gotta think about golf. You know, the biggest problem with golf, right, they say it's 90% mental, and if Yogi was here, he'd say the other half physical, right? Right. Um, but it's 90% mental because we have to overcome inertia to start with, right? And then once you overcome inertia, the yeah, because you're standing still. Yeah. yeah. And so the golf swing, once you overcome inertia, it's all a series of reactions. So if, so if your club is going this way, that is the start of it, right? But then this is actually created by what happens going backwards, right? So it's all a series of reactions. So if your mind is telling you, oh, I need to stay down on it, but something in your takeaway is telling you, I need to stand up to initiate the movement, you're never going to sit down because it's defeating the, the plan that comes before staying down. Yeah. Right. So, so you stand up as a way to trigger the swing or because of something that you think you can't do. And so if you try to fix staying down on it, it's going to be super hard because it's only going to work when you think about it. Right. And so what I want to do, you see like uh, Stockton's book, Un Unconscious Putting. Yeah. It, in the intro, it's one of my favorite intros of all time where he talks about, the idea that, you know, it's, it's like driving. And so, you know, you, when you first learn how to drive, it's complicated. And then it gets super easy, and then you go 20 miles, and you don't remember anything along the way sometimes, and you don't get in an accident. And then a police officer gets in behind you, and all of a sudden it's like you've never driven before because you start right. thinking about it. Right? I mean, it's the best example I've ever heard. Yeah, so if they want to pull somebody over, all they have to do is tail them for like yeah. five miles, and, and everybody's going to do something illegal at some point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what we're trying to do is just go in and clear what's the unconscious programming that precedes all movement. And if you can clear that out, then you don't have to fix standing up because you would never stand up biomechanically. It doesn't make any sense. Well, here's the thing, Alan, that I've always thought was very confusing about golf and my swing in, in, in particular. But I've seen this with a lot of people, and I just had it confirmed with some like uh, AI swing analysis stuff that I've been doing. My golf swing, when I swing, just swing and take a swipe at the, the mat, yeah. not a ball, like I'm not trying to hit anything anywhere, is markedly better than when I swing and I hit a ball yeah. uh, off a tee or off the mat or anything. Correct. So you got to figure out where the, the challenge is coming from. So you gave me some good insight there, and it's accurate that, that it's, you're not ball focused. 
you're you're outcome focused and that's what's killing your golf swing your consistency is that you're outcome focused and you're so busy waiting to see what happened that you forgot to make it happen right and so so when you put a foam ball in there you can hit that good because you're not expecting it to go anywhere right yeah right? and even and even if you make a good swing or a bad swing the yeah. balls like kind of deform when you hit them, so you really can't learn much from where yeah, it goes. Yeah, right. You just, you just know right. how it felt, right? Right. So then you tro- you focus on true feel, not a feel based on how it went, because you're saying, well, it went that way, so it must have been good. So now you're trying to make that feel feel good in hindsight, and we screw everything up that way. So here's the thing: is the biggest thing that that's holding you back a little bit right now is the frustration of being so close. You got so many different pieces. You got so much information. You're working so hard that uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60% of your energy is in the future about when it's going to be good. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so now you only got about 40% of your energy to fund what's happening now. So what I like to do is imagine all of that that's expecting things, expecting it to be better, expecting it not to be better. And just call all that back to now. The word, all we're doing is just saying, hey, look, it, I can't hit the ball if I'm not here. So if I'm thinking about the future, I can't hit the ball. So you're saying instead of be better golf, you want to be now golf. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, Rob Doss would have liked that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, his thing back in the day was be here now, right? Who's, but who's that? The ball. Ram Doss was a big spiritual teacher from oh, back okay. in the 60s, kind of brought yoga to the U.S., kind of that time what are some good ways to be more present and in the shot rather rather than because i can tell you like when when i'm not hitting it well i'm before i even take the club away i'm thinking about like a like one or two seconds in the future of what i'm trying to do or not to do usually what not to do like i'm usually i'm usually thinking like okay i've been i've been like what i've been pulling it that's been my, my my thing recently so I've been pulling it. So already I'm setting up open and trying like this Lee Trevino kind of like trap block thing. And uh, so right away, so I'm that's in my mind already. So basically my whole swing becomes a reaction to the pulls that I've been having. That's so what's right. a better way of, of yeah, thinking so, about it? So what I'll tell you, so I'll show you this. So I want you to close your eyes and imagine standing over a ball. Uh-huh. You're on the first tee, 420 yards, right down the middle. All you got to do is, is hit it down the middle. And you'll be in good shape. What's the first thing that comes up as you get re- as you stand over the ball and you're getting ready to swing? What's the first thing that comes up? A thought, feeling, emotion, or sensation? I'd say a feeling, definitely. Okay. What's the yeah. feeling? This is like right trigger finger is usually like there's a certain kind of pressure in my swing. I, I kind of feel so as I'm like visualizing walking behind it i can kind of feel it in my right hand a little bit like what i want to what i want to feel okay yeah so let's take that and we're just going to grab that up and imagine you have a giant bucket in front of you and we're just going to take that feeling and we're going to throw it into that bucket uh-huh. yeah just throw yeah. that feeling into the bucket and then throw it into the universe like dump it away <laughs> yeah just throw it away okay if you need it it'll come back okay. let me ask you right. this question right What's two plus two? Four, yeah. Okay, what's four plus three? We're getting trickier. Seven. Okay, good. So you didn't have to walk around all day going two plus two is four, four plus three is seven in case some crazy guy asked me. Right. Right? So you already know that. And so when it's time to get that information, you just go get that information and put it into action. Okay. Yeah, in our golf swing, we start rehearsing all of these things that we think we need to do in order to hit a ball. Yet if in your baseball swing, you generally wouldn't do that. No, like when I was doing the flips with Milo that I think you saw, like, uh, it's just it's just kind of fun. Like, I like throw it in the air and just try, try to, like, torque it. Just try to hit That's it hard. That's a reaction, right? It is a reaction, yeah. It's, it's in the air, and, and you just yeah. got to go, or else you're going to miss it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can hit an 85-mile-an-hour slider better than I can hit a ball on a tee. Yeah, that's right? still. And that's because I'm, like, locked in, or I'm locked on a thought before I start moving, and now you're dead, right? Because it's going to make you take the club back slow. And then it's going to make you hit from the top, trying to catch up. And you're already lost before you start because you got to break inertia. And when you're thinking, you're always a hair late. And so now you look like a baseball player that's that's late on the fastball and fast on the changeup. So we got that. So now go back in and imagine standing over the ball again. You're 
down that okay. fairway, 420. All you gotta do is hit it down the middle. What's the yeah. first thing that comes up now? Thought feeling. More, more of a more of like a shot tracer visualization. I'd okay. say that I'd be that'd be more more of like kind of I'm seeing I'm seeing a little bit of a draw. Okay. Starts up to the right and, and comes back. Yeah. And you didn't try to do that, right? It just happened. Right. Yeah. That's it just right. happened. Yeah. That's right. So we don't want to force it. We want to make it happen. Now here's the thing that we know about imagery is if you leave it in the head, this is where you tend to get stuck. Um, because what I do on my end is I feel, when you say something, I feel in my body where it's getting stuck, right? And so, and it's kind of weird. It'd be, take me all day to explain it because I don't totally understand it. Um, but so when you feel that, see that shot tracer, one of the things is that with imagery, we've studied imagery and about 5% of the image has to leak into our body. Okay. So it doesn't always make us better to image something. So now what I want you to do is, is feel that shot tracer again and see if you can feel that going through your entire body. What would it feel like to hit that shot? What would that feel like? There you go. And let it go through your head. There you go. Just let it fall through the, in the head, the neck, the shoulders, the body, the feeling of that shot. Perfect shot. Let it go down in your legs and let it come out off of you. So now your vibration is that feeling, right? And so now just open your eyes for a second. And now think about that shot. You're over the ball again. Uh huh. And feel what that feels like standing over the ball. Okay. What does that feel like? Kind of feels like a, a, a buildup of potential energy almost like a That's kind right. of like a, a coiled spring before you you, you start it yeah because you had this thought that was a beautiful image and it felt good but it's still in your head and so if you just let that fall into your body and go with what would that feel like to hit that shot now your body's on the same page as your mind now yeah. they're not fighting each other uh -huh. so that's one way to do it and so that's when people are looking at a shot a lot of times they let the, the hole determine the shot shape but really what you want to do is just relax and close your eyes for half a second and see what shot you image. And if you can image the shot, what would it feel like to hit that perfect shot? And you just let right. that through. So what is what is a good pre-shot routine you, you like people to do to kind of get locked into this? What I like to do is if I close my eyes, the first thing that most amateurs do is they feel the boundaries. I don't want to go left. I don't want to go right. So the first thing I do is take all those boundaries that I'm feeling, all the trouble, all the memories of that trouble, and put it in a giant bucket. And once I feel that going in the bucket, I just chuck it off into the universe. And you might have to do that once or twice, but all of a sudden you're sitting there, and now all of a sudden that goes away, and you start seeing what you're trying to do for the first time. And you might see that little shot tracer. And so then it's like, okay, I see that shot tracer. What would it feel like to do that? And you just allow that to flow. So now you got your mind and your body connected. Okay, now you're standing over the ball. You're about to swing at the ball. What comes up now when you think about that? So you're actually over the ball, getting ready to hit the ball. Like how I'm, I'm, maybe it's just from the course of this conversation, but I think it's something I think about a lot. Uh, just how I'm going to get this motion started, go from, you know, not moving to moving. A right. Lot of times I'll kind of go like, you know, that, you know, kind of to get it going. Okay. Not the so, best way. But. Yeah. So now take that feeling uh -huh. and grab that and throw that into your bucket. Right. And just yeah. dump it. Yeah. yeah. Keep throwing it in the bucket. Yeah. Like all that, that snatching, that, what am yeah, I going to do to get rules. this going? Yeah. Do yeah. this. Don't do this. I got a lot of don't do that. Put all that yeah. in there. All your history. All the uh -huh. things that people have told you, right? Because mm -hmm. if you've actually learned it, you don't need to practice two plus two all the time. You just need to no. do it when you need it. So now chuck it. Okay. Good. And now take a nice breath. All right. Now you're standing over the ball, getting ready to hit it. Oh, that was the first time it went positive. There was like anticipation of, oh, I can't wait to hit this ball. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's what felt on my end. I don't know what it felt like on your end. I have more of that, that like, I feel like the my battery is more charged. Like, I have this 
potential energy i'm charged and i'm, I'm like ready to go and it, and it just feels like yeah the energy now is just starting to go from just like kind of stored to kind of just starting to flow out of me and that's the emotion that starts it. that's right yeah but you didn't have a thought doing it you just had to get rid of your thoughts to do that no no yeah no 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 thought i would just be almost like watching the swing happen from a third person view you know yeah, like it so, just starts yeah so when people notice a change because i treat trauma and all sorts of stuff as well but when people notice a change what happens is it either goes from all these thoughts and feelings that come in in a rush to what did you eat for lunch three weeks ago last tuesday like you could figure it out but it would take some some thinking right or it goes from first person to third person. Like I'm sitting there with a ball, getting ready to hit the ball, and two, I'm watching this guy hit the ball and it looks so easy. Yeah, yeah. Right, because mm -hmm. now you're losing your attachment to the ball. Yeah, there's definitely like, no come. when I'm in the zone, Yeah. there's definitely like a third person feel to it. That's right. So right. like, so when I'm just- with that, that bucket and the vibration, bringing that feeling through, is we're putting you back in the zone. When I think about like that, I've shot in the 60s three times and, and each one of, of all those times where I felt like I've had total control or not really control, but like total confidence in where the ball was going to go. Yeah. But but I, I, I felt like I was just kind of watching myself play golf those days. Yeah, that's right. Because if you have, let's say that, that your swing takes less than a second, right? And your downswing takes maybe eight hundredths of a second or twelve hundredths of a second. It's, it's fast, right? So there's no way that you can ever catch up to do something on the downswing. How long does it take, because you would probably know, between when you can have a thought to try to do something and then when your body can do it? That's your reaction time. But then yeah. even when they measure your reaction time in hundredths of a second, there's no thought coming before that. That's just reaction. That's unconscious or subconscious. Okay. Right? And so then if you have this thing at the top, I need to make sure I do this, you're done. Because you can okay. never catch back up again. If you're trying to figure out something to do up here, you're done. There's no yeah. way. And if you can get clear, then you got a shot. Because right now what's happening is you're in Mark Twainville. That I've had a lot of really horrible things happen in my life, some of which have actually happened. Right? Okay. What's happening is you got all these things that might happen and all these things that have happened. And you got to just go in and put those all in the bucket because you don't yeah. have time to think. If, you, if you're over the ball and you have a thought, you're in trouble. And what we know from, there's a lady down at Arizona State who does e EEG. She looks at the brain waves. And all pros, before they hit a ball or elite golfers, there'll be a window where the thought waves drop to almost nothing. The beta waves drop to almost nothing. And when, they, does that, when does that happen? Like right before they pull the trigger? Just before they, before they initiate the swing, whether it's a oh. putt or a hit. So it's, and, it's like busy, 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 flat, and then they go. And then that's their key to swing. Oh, that's cool. Right. There's a window of quiet before they are allowed to swing, and they found that. And that's true with almost every elite golfer. And when they hit that window, they will tell you that they felt good and they actually hit it good. And then when they're actually thinking there's higher beta waves, which means thought, when they feel that, beta waves happening and then they hit the ball either a they won't have hit it as good or b it won't have felt as good because they're so distracted that it just something didn't feel right so something something came in their mind like yeah. an actual started yeah. thinking about so it. even if their shot was perfect they would say ah, it wasn't exactly right and so what we're trying to do basically is get as quiet as you can over the ball and then have your swing be inevitable at that point Oh, okay. And so if you're going to think you have a swing motion or a swing thought, that's fine, but do it behind the ball as you're looking, gazing at the hole. So don't do it standing over the ball. There's so many different theories and everything on the channel. Mm -hmm. P people have said like, oh, just go out there and play. Just go swing. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've tried it a couple times where like, okay, I'm going to play this round with no swing thoughts. There's yeah. going to be no swing thoughts. And, and I feel like when I play with no thoughts at all, like the ball can really go anywhere that's right so. yeah so when you're behind the ball have have your thing feel your swing one thing at a time maybe and just feel that and then when you go to stand up to the ball the only thing you're trying to do is get set and get comfortable and see if you can feel like you're just letting all slots go and as soon as you feel like the thinking starts to settle at that point you can start your swing 
how long is that that flat spot? Is it just like a couple seconds before they take it back? Oh, or, or it can be usually a little while. It's nearly instantaneous. As soon as they feel that quietude, because it That's might only happen for a split second. Okay. As soon as they feel that, like, goes into emptiness, they start to swing. It goes from, like, uh like the static and then just kind of goes flat and that's when yeah. you start. And you yeah. might feel it like as a glee getting ready to just smack the ball. Like that's okay because there's no tech technique to it. It just feels like, Oh, I just feel relaxed and I'm kind of excited to hit the ball. That's fine. But yeah. if you're like thinking about mechanics, you don't have time in your swing, even in the backswing to control your mechanics. It's too fast. Yeah. Right. And that's the whole tour tempo stuff. I love the tour tempo stuff because you know, when we slow down the backswing, it's because we're trying to hit points. Yeah, yeah, positions and right. Yeah, so if, we, if we're not trying to hit positions, we're going to go back much quicker. Yeah. Because you have this false belief right now that in order for you to play golf well, you have to remember to do a lot of things. And I would say at this point, if you've actually learned anything, you have to forget more than you remember. Yeah, a lot of times you'll have a good, I'll have a good session on the range, or I'll be hitting it well on the range. And then sometimes, and then like you do stuff, and then and then you walk walk up to the the first tee, and you're like, all right, what what was I doing on the on the range that was making it feel so good? And and you, and I just you won't like, and you'll start kind of going through a rolodex of of different feels, and you're like, no, it wasn't that, it wasn't that. And you're like, oh, I think it was this. And then yeah. so then you're trying to catch the lightning in a bottle that you had the other day, and 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 put it on the ball today. Yeah, and you're and you're never here. In the now, you mean? Yeah. yeah. You're, you're never where you um, think you are. You're somewhere else, looking for it, or in the future. Yeah, you're kind of you're in the you're good. in the past of what you did before, and then you're in the future of what you hope to do today. But you're not you're not in the in the, the right. now, right this second. Yeah. And it's hard to to do good body things when you don't have any energy in your body. It's all in your mind. Yeah. Right. So if you can let your mind go. The natural place your energy goes, this is where it kind of crosses dimensions a little bit into the energetic realm, is it goes into the body. When, when you're in your mind, what happens is your, your body gets defunded. And then all of a sudden, it's like that, that baseball player that's in a slump, late on the fastball, early on the, on the off-speed stuff, right? Because you're in between. Mm -hmm. and so the first thing you want to do is just put it all in a bucket, no thoughts. Even when you're in the middle of a lesson, right? Okay, so now if I'm going to ever hit this ball... Yes, I believe all that was true, but I got to let all that go and then trust that I've learned it. No, okay, yeah. And then, and then just loosely, you see a response. You're like, oh, okay, well, it felt like I didn't get through all the time. Well, does that feel like it's going to happen next time? No, move on. Does that feel like it's going to happen next time? Okay, let's, yes, let's take that and throw that in the bucket. Yeah. So the yeah. yips, I can get rid of the yips with somebody in a session. No problem. Right, because it's all that they're getting tentative from their mind, and we just got to get rid of their mind, right? And and that's really easy once they realize that that's the problem. We just put all that in a bucket and chuck it. So you figure out like what is their anxiety they're having with the chipping yips or the putting yips, and and you you just get them actively to forget about how did how do you get people to forget about that? Well, they just put it in the bucket. So everything that they're feeling, everything that they're thinking, they just put that in the bucket. All the things about what's going to happen when I hit this, what are my hand? oh, I feel my hands, okay, throw that in the bucket. Okay, I feel like I'm not swinging through it, put that in the bucket and chuck that. Yeah. Because otherwise you got like 27 swing thoughts, which is the equivalent to like wearing 30 prescription lenses and wondering why you can't see clearly. And the yeah. optometrist goes, dude, you got like 30 glasses on, let's take some of those off and see how your vision is. But you have had so many different lessons that you got like 18 instructors and 600 swing thoughts fighting with each other. And that's why you're not going to have any consistency, not the consistency you want. Mm -hmm. Your swing is getting better for sure, but it's going to be less consistent because you got all these warring thoughts. And as soon as you hit one bad one, you're like, okay, what did Milo say? Or what did Mike say? Or what did, you know, uh, who knows? Say? Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. And so you grab all those things and chuck them. Right. So if you're like having all these things chirping at you, it's really hard to enjoy around the golf. And then you can't have any fun as well. So it, now the same thing. Yeah, go ahead. 
No, I was just saying people say this about fun, like fun a lot. Like I'm not, like I'm not really in it. For, like I want to play better golf. Like I really don't care about fun that much. Like well, the most people like, you know, I mean, and I probably should. It's probably unhealthy, you know, to be so fixated on playing better. Yeah. But um, and and obviously it goes it goes I, it goes together. But uh, yeah, like fun is like. But fun will give you longevity. Yeah. And being fixated on playing better. Those two aren't aren't dichotomous. They don't no. fit one category or another, right? It's just that if you have fun and, and enjoying it, then it's a process oriented game, and so it, you'll keep showing up for the next fifty years. Yeah. There'll be a threshold where you hit plateaus, and if you can't get the answers you want, and you're not having fun, you'll stop playing golf, or yeah. your work will get busier, or whatever. You know, something will come in the way because you're not having any fun anyway. All right, Dr. Allen, thank you so much for that. I, I really look forward to uh, to doing this either in person or in a, uh, certainly certainly on a on a Zoom call. I'll just I'll just do it from the uh, from the range. Perfect. And uh, if anybody wants to get in contact with you or, or, or do some training with you, how can they connect with you? Yeah, so I have a website, uh, resourceenergetics.com. And it's Dr. N D R N at resourceenergetics.com. Okay, and next time I talk to you, we got to talk about the correct way to use training aids. Yeah. Because I, I know that the way that I'm using and everybody's using training aids is is not perfect to make it happen on the course. So I, I wanted to talk to you about that as well. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Okay. So, well, thank thanks you for so taking much. so much time. Guys, click the subscribe button. See you later. Bye.